by people in radar engineering, you will come to pictures like that. And that picture contains all the possible transfer functions. So if you move around a line that goes through the horizontal axis, you will have the transfer function when you have no focus error. But as you can see here, the ambiguity function is tightly related to that without a slope. That means that when focus error increases, the slope of this line will also increase. Right? So this is a wonderful interpretation. You see, the same picture that is used for radar engineering can be used to understand what is the influence of focus error on the optical transfer. So as you can see, in the moment that we start to make an slope, an inclination to this line, it will go cross trans several zeros. And you remember from the geometric transfer function that zeros are no good to remove. That means that the population will be zero. And that information is lost. So consequently, focus error is bad thing, and you can see it in this diagram. What do I want to use this diagram for? Well, you say, I would like to see what's going on for this spatial frequency as I move vertically. Every time that I find a point, I have to look what is this log. And this log will tell me what is the amount of focus error. Consequently, that we can be used as a tolerance diagram. What is the tolerance to focus error? Now, I want me to make a tour just to see what is this is our time of a useful mathematical tool since I am describing something that's called bigger optics of phase spatial resolution. So, bear with me in this simple description. It is a router, usually it is a short ball to a target. In the moment that it goes to the target, it's reflected back. So the person will know at what distance is the target. You know, the speed of light is so high. But, of course, you use a very large pulse. You don't know when it's coming and when it's still sending. So what we would like to have is a extremely short pulse in time, in such a way that you are sure that you send it, and in that moment that it's back, you are still not meaning that this is still receiving. So as you cover radar, that's very short, should be also the pulse that you send from the radar to your back. So far? So good. Okay, and then consequently you will say like that. High resolution and range. You say where is located the target, it has to be associated with a short pulse in time. Or short forces in time are drawn by the beams that have a lot of frequencies, right? Then I don't care. I can produce a short force, I will tell the information where the target is located. However, this is an important situation. Perhaps you don't know the face of this gentleman, but this gentleman is Christian Johan Dobler, right? Oscar physicist, and you remember when you studied physics and engineering. That that man was responsible for identifying what? The, the change of frequency when the target or the meeting is also detected, right? So it makes sense to take into account this because you say, I can tell you where the target and it's too late because you say, where the target was. So if the target remains stationary, you say, it is there. But the target is moving. As the target is moving, the way to identify the speed in which the target is moving is looking at the change in frequency using the Doppler effect. Does that make you? Then you have to also know about the Doppler effect. And for the Doppler effect, it can be very confusing. You have a lot of signals with different frequencies because every frequency will be shifted, right? So it's kind of messy. They say, no, why do I have a short pole that, well, a pose that is fairly monochromatic? And such an idea that when it comes back, I can tell you what is the change in frequency. 
Uh, if you have a monochromatic signal, what is the time? Is width. Infinite, right? So you have here also a drag bar. What would you like to have? Short forces for identifying range. Or narrow frequency forces to identify the local range. And you got one, right? So good bar, what it is, is say, let us examine this expression because this expression is good for taking into account, account sorry, the trade-off between range and double range. Um, interestingly enough, this same expression will be useful for us by taking into account that the transfer function behaves to do well with focus error. That's it for you. So anyway, and this means that there is a very strong link between the ways that we are trying to understand trade-offs between two, two quantities that are Fourier transfer pairs. You remember that was the idea of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? So people in quantum physics, people in radar engineering, are uh, not if they have become zero day, but uh, we relax. That also for describing the trade off between high resolution and high focal depth can be expressed in terms of an ambiguity function, which is the Fourier transform of the big distribution. In other words, that taking into account trade-offs between two, two quantities that are fully related is better to do it with phase space representation. So far? So good. So that is the message. What we will have to learn bigger. That we are not quantum physics. We are not radar engineers. But we would like to take into account how resolution um, Depth of field are related, and the two are fully transparent. So we better stick to the same tool, because we can learn a lot about what has been done in one field, perhaps can be translated into another. Do you remember I talked previously that there is a strong connection between the differential equations, right? No surprisingly, there's also a strong connection between phases. So far? So good. Good. Now, if one thing is to understand what's going on, and the other thing is to take an advantage of really trying to apply it. So once that I learned that it was possible to use the formalities of the ambiguity function, I started to use it, how can I use it to do a Taylor function? This is the transfer function with focus error. How it changes when I do a Taylor series expansion? to see how the transfer function is changing because I see that the same thing, how the ambiguity function is changing. And then I thought, if I do this, perhaps I will be able to translate similar treatments and rather engineering. So I come to the conclusion that to have, and I like this result because they say, all the terms that are off in the order of the Taylor expansion can be zeros if you satisfy this condition. It's a symmetry condition. But this is good because you see the presence of these odd numbers tends to be very, very sensitive to design. It's not the same focus at all. In one direction and the other, so it can be different. Why? Because when you do your Taylor expansion, all numbers are sensitive to the sign of W, right? There are all powers of W, they are sensitive to the sign. And the thing that definitely you would like to destroy is the first order term. In such a way that you say the transfer function is the transfer function with zero over zero, uh, the next term comes as a second order term. So it's a way of saying, ah, there is the possibility to have something which is stationary. That is not a process of
right? Because it's completely second order. So if you pay attention to the second order and say we are okay, and furthermore, we are not surprised to say that only a symmetrical condition will allow you to destroy all of the odd terms in the Taylor series function. So we are, we were extremely happy, of course, and saying, oh, oh, we are going to find something which is rather useful, and then to allow it to summarize the letter. If you have a radar engineer that you have long time pulses that will 